All right, joining me now is the Australian's editor-at-large, Paul Kelly, from Sydney. Uh, it's no mean feat for there to be administrators called into the Victorian branch of the ALP, particularly when they're in power and they have a very powerful uh, Premier. He would like to think it's uh, nothing to do with him, Paul. What do you make of it all? This is an extraordinary situation, Peter. Victoria is the Labor stronghold. Victoria is the anchor sheet that really holds the Labor Party together. And what we've seen is we've seen the national executive intervene to take over control of the Victorian branch. And this is essentially because the uh, membership rights of 16,000 members are being suspended. The branch stacking rort is out of control. We've seen the Victorian Premier make that absolutely clear. So we've got this intervention. The fundamental question now, of course, is what this means for factional tension and rivalry, both mm -hmm. inside the Victorian branch and in the uh, broader issue of the Labor Party nationally. And it's idle to think that this won't inflame tensions between the left and right factions. Well, just unpick that for me a bit there, because uh, people at home, I think, probably need to understand uh, where Anthony Albanese sit, where Daniel Andrews sit in the factional ward, and, and obviously the power that the right, certainly when Stephen Conroy and Bill Shorten were, were more in the ascendancy, the power the right had in Victoria and the right vis-a-vis -vis the right in New South Wales, because this is all very germane, given there'll be no pre-selections, people will be grandfathered now uh, for the next three years. Doesn't that make the two leaders by virtue of administrators, actually more powerful now than ever before? I think that's correct. I think the two leaders are more powerful than before, but I think the internal tensions will be greater than before. Now, Peter, there's an extraordinary contradiction here. Just think about what we've been told over the last three days. We've had the Victorian Premier, Dan Andrews, tell us that he can't guarantee uh, the integrity of any of the membership roles of the Labor Party in Victoria in terms of pre-selection. In other words, the rort is right through the party. Yet on the other hand, we're told that he is shocked. Everybody is shocked, shocked. They had no idea that all this was going on. So the rot is right through the party, but nobody knew anything about it. Well, I mean, frankly, you'd need to call in the Faulty Towers team to come to grips with this farce. And so why does he get clearly... away with it, though, Paul? I've got to jump in there because I say the same thing. I call BS on this. I've been in party, political parties for 16-plus years. I call BS on this. So why does he get away with it? Why does he get to stand up there in a press conference, as he did today, and basically pretend that he's just discovered this cancer in the party, a party that he was an absolute insider as the Assistant General Secretary in Victoria and now has led for a decade? Well, we'll see what happens, Peter, but, I mean, clearly there's an awful lot more to come out in this story, and hopefully it will come out over the following days, weeks and months. But what we've been told so far is clearly a nonsense, and the extent of the contradiction that I just outlined cannot be ignored. Now, I think the critical question for Anthony Albanese and his national leadership is whether or not factionalism in the Labor Party is going to become... Uh, a more pressing and a more open and public issue over the course of the next couple of years. One mm -hmm. of Bill Shorten's successes as a Labor leader was that he could manage the factions and he contained factionalism. It'll be a very significant uh, challenge for Anthony Albanese to do the same. Uh, talk to me about Labor MP Anthony Byrne. Now, I declare an interest. Obviously, I'm not a member of the Labor Party, but I have known him in dealings with uh, intelligence issues when I've worked for a former Prime Minister. I always found him very decent, pretty honourable, actually, to deal with. Uh, there's been talk that he's compromised now because of his position on this intelligence committee. He's the Deputy Chair. Andrew Hastie's on the show a bit later on. He's the Chairman. Um, and because these recordings were done in his office... Now, Stephen Conroy says today that there's nothing illegitimate about them or illegal happening in Victoria. The opposition leader was also asked about it on radio in Victoria. Let's have a listen. One of your that, backbenchers that, has potentially, in a very sensitive position on the Intelligence Committee, has potentially had his office bugged, both, both with video and, and tapes on the phones. And you'd, would you call in the Federal Police to ask the Federal Police to have a look at that? 
Well, the federal police make their own decisions. Well, you, yes, but you're quite, no, entitled. No, no. you're quite entitled to no, say, no, could you look at as, this? As, as are you. As I understand it, the Channel Line and the, the Age don't have full copies of the tapes. Mis- potentially, Mr Anthony Byrne's office does. I'm asking you, if... Uh, I can establish that IBAC has not called him as a witness and you are therefore able to talk to him about these things, will you? Well, I should imagine I would be amazed if authorities aren't speaking to all the people okay, in fair enough. Uh, Just before I come to you, I want to tell viewers at home too, the Victorian uh, corruption body has confirmed they're looking at this issue and Anthony Byrne has said this afternoon, of course, whatever's required in terms of cooperation, he will. What's your take, Paul? Well... Anthony Byrne is clearly right at the centre of this issue. Now, there's a lot we don't know about his role, but it seems at this stage as though he has been a principal player in what you might call the sting in terms of this issue, and there will be a lot more to come out in terms of these investigations about his exact role. The point I would make about Anthony Byrne, though, is he does have a particularly sensitive position as the Deputy Chair and Senior Labor figure on the Parliamentary Intelligence Committee. Now, the government has significant confidence in Anthony Byrne as the Senior Labor figure on that committee, and Andrew Hastie, as the Chair of that committee, has a close working relationship with Anthony Byrne and has a high opinion of his integrity. I think Byrne's role has been very important because essentially what happens is all the national security legislation is preceded through that committee. And that committee is fundamental to establishing political bipartisanship for all these laws. I think the role of both Andrew Hastie and Anthony Byrne in that sense has been really important in terms of the national interest and in terms of the parliament. So it'll be interesting to see the way the government plays this issue, not just the Labor Party. Yeah, look, and if I go back to Stephen Conroy's comments and my understanding of the telecommunications inception powers, if he's not done anything wrong in Victoria, and if, in fact, uh, he or his office have shed the sunlight on the behaviour of these branch stackers uh, in the Victorian party, so much so that the administrators have been called in, so much so that three ministers have lost their commission, well, surely he deserves to be congratulated rather than condemned. Well, that's a very good point. And, look... I think, I think the point to make about Anthony Byrne is that he is a very prudent uh, and cautious MP. He's alert to uh, national security and interception issues. Frankly, I would find it very hard to believe that he broke the law. And this is, this is really a fundamental question. Did he break the law or not? Um, and then there's the question that you have raised. If, in fact, he's played a role in exposing uh, a lot of this behaviour, well, that is something to be applauded. Yeah, we'll see what comes out. Paul Kelly, as always, thanks for your analysis. Thanks for your time tonight.